The materials man uses are as old as history itself. And so is the pride with which he shapes them. Both ancient and modern glassworking skills are in use. Craftsmanship in glass allows man to use it in various ways. In the arts. In the sciences. design and in mass production on the assembly line. In the production of aircraft, New materials and methods to make new products are constantly being applied. The production line and modern automation have helped make possible today's jet transports including the new Superjet, the 747. To make these gigantic airframes practical, structures lighter, stronger, and more economical than aluminum were needed. The technology of glass merged with that of plastics has provided them. On the 747 program, large, critical aircraft control surfaces are being made of fiberglass reinforced plastics. Rudder and elevators, wing to body fairings, flaps and control surfaces, and leading edge flaps. These control the flight of the 747 with its nearly 500 passengers. They will fly in safety, borne on wings of glass. While much research and testing were necessary to make fiberglass structures possible, the production methods developed are quite simple. Only three main elements are needed. Honeycomb core, fiberglass fabric, and a craftsman's care for quality at every step. The first step is shaping the materials to be assembled. Honeycomb core, either fiberglass or plastic, is carefully sawed to the correct thickness. For bigger assemblies, core segments are spliced together to be large enough to accommodate the part and some excess. The honeycomb can then be trimmed to the shape required. strength along the edges and where holes will later be drilled, areas are potted with a metallized plastic. Painstaking masking prevents unwanted leakage to other areas.
curing time is then required, during which the potted core must not be disturbed. The last step in core preparation is chamfering or beveling the edges. The cutter is set for the right angle and the part is pulled through. Care must be taken here not to pull the honeycomb too hard. It can easily be stretched and will not return to its usable shape. This causes a loss of both time and money. After beveling, the core can be stored until it is needed for assembly. The fiberglass fabric, a glass cloth pre-impregnated with plastic and nicknamed pre-preg, is also trimmed ahead of time. During trimming and all handling throughout production, gloves must be worn to avoid contaminating the pre -prake. Skin layers, shaped, leaving some excess, are cut in kits for later use. Since this type of plastic hardens as it warms up, it has an out-of-storage life of only 72 hours. After that, it is unusable and must be discarded. When not being worked, therefore, pre preg must be stored under refrigeration and the time spent in trimming must be subtracted from its remaining lifespan. Layup of a fiberglass assembly is done on a mandrel or mold. A parting agent is applied so the finished assembly will not stick to the tool. And to prevent flaws in the part surface, it must be applied with precise uniformity. The parting agent must be allowed to dry for a prescribed time, then cooled. Again, careful monitoring is necessary, since it must be neither too dry nor too soft. If the assembly's outside finish is to be applied at this time, it is flame sprayed on. Precise thickness and evenness are controlled by sprayer adjustment, by its distance from the surface, and by its speed of movement. The resin is then applied to seal the surface, and the surface is cured. Aluminizing by flame spray is a special technique covered by strict specifications since the layer of aluminum serves both as an electrical conductor and as the aircraft's exterior finish. In most cases, this metal finish will be applied later and more simply. To fabricate the structure, pre preg is withdrawn from storage and placed on the mandrel one layer at a time. Fiberglass cloth, like any woven material, has a warp in its weave. And since these assemblies are designed for certain stresses in flight, the warp must lie in a specified direction. When two pieces must be overlapped, laps must be staggered from layer to layer. If laps are allowed to build up, the part will be rejected. For if this buildup is undetected, the part can fail later. Since each layer is hidden by the next, the care of a craftsman is the best assurance of quality. With each prepreg layer, wrinkles which would weaken the structure must be worked out by hand as also must bridges over concave areas. When doublers are called for, a template is used to mark the exact doubler location. With the outer skin in place, the ready honeycomb core can be laid in to the precise locations already marked. Once in place, it is tacked with warm air to set the plastic.
the prepreg inner skin is then laid up in the same way as the outer one. Around the inside doublers, a coarse bleeder cloth is laid in outside the trim area to allow air to escape when the part is vacuum drawn. When the last ply is in place, the assembly is sealed in a vacuum bag for curing. Plastic sheeting and a fine bleeder cloth are laid over the prepreg. Care in handling assures there are no holes in the vacuum bag. Lines for drawing a vacuum are in place. Careful workmanship assures a tight seal and removes wrinkles which might cause a weak bond between layers. Thermocouples for temperature sensing during the coming uh, cure cycle are installed. With the vacuum drawn, the part is ready for curing. Curing in an autoclave under heat and pressure is a fairly standard process. It is automatic and done to a rigid specification. After curing, parts become a one-piece, lightweight, durable structure, ready for routine drilling, trimming, and finishing. If the part was not flame sprayed before the layup, it is painted and the part is completed. While this entire fabrication cycle is covered by detailed instructions and control records, it is still the skill of the hand workman that makes the product. Fabricated with care, fiberglass structures are long-lasting and maintenance-free. They cost up to 50% less than aluminum and are up to 70% lighter. Fiberglass can be flexed repeatedly. On the 747, the fiberglass leading edge flap can actually change its curvature. The low drag cruising wing is thus transformed into a high lift airfoil with greater efficiency than ever before. Here, just as here, advances in production methods and in technology have created new challenges and given a new importance to the skilled craftsman. Hand workmanship and pride are important in making this or this.